some of the some of the things my, some of the things I was looking through as other municipalities talked about this and some are going forward with it is that they were just asking for the active roster to just make sure that that is an active person that is 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 volunteering so that the municipality has some way of, of validating the the, um, the tax relief but you know based upon what I've seen throughout the years with the fire departments coming in here um, you know there is that that possibility in the future that you know this municipality will have to pass some kind of fire additional tax just to pay for paid firemen um, because of the lack of volunteers. So if the township was to research a little bit more into this area and possibly to offer the tax break, it, it might help people that you know might be interested in volunteering. It would give them an incentive to do something. You know, to get involved and um, just something that you know, given that the general assembly is trying to push that municipality to. It might help us in the long run save money versus taxing for paid fire. So, to see if the board's interested in possibly researching or going more into it. I would love to hear more about it and see what we would be able to do. I mean, it's very good. You know, uh, helping out the volunteers is obviously a very good thing to do for their uh, volunteer service. So, Mike, would there, we, would, we would need to formulate an ordinance to, to get that through? And yeah, but the, the most efficient way to do it is to kind of see if anyone else has done it, because I think the meat of it is going to be the, you know, the requirements that you're going to want those volunteers to fulfill for the uh, different fire companies. Uh, and then it, it might be that our fire, fire companies have that at the ready, uh, yeah. in terms of the criteria that they would so at least require. So Lisa, maybe through the Secretary's Association email blast that you have, maybe send out an email to the Chester County Secretary's Association inquiring on their municipalities to see if anyone's passed this, given that this is kind of a new thing, um, and see you know if anyone has done it, and then we can bring that in. If there is, we can bring that back to Mike. You know, a free method of finding out versus. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The second part I have here is uh, B. Um, it deals with amending the comprehensive plan, the new one that we just had to, off to offer a plan with water issues in the township. I mean, something that's coming up here is, is um, you know, south of Stroudsburg Road, it seems to be an area that um, that is not touched at all as far as the, the township putting in place some public services as far as bringing water that way. The given premise that I have has just been, it's been, you know, the, the fear of development or things of that nature going that way, but if you look at what's before the board now, we have a development going in, and some of the major complaints that we're having from residents along Timicola Road is that the effect on their wells, uh, and they're, you know, they're nervous about what will happen from that. I don't understand the township's presence um, as far as not providing uh, services past, you know, south, uh, south of Strasburg Road. I understand that we have the King's ranch sector over here with the 19 properties, but they're protected through deeds um, themselves. I mean, there's no threat of a development going in on them. But to, for the township to have the, 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 the stance of not providing services, even though we're seeing with um, sewage problems and water issues south of Stroudsburg, when what we're working on is Act 537, um, it's just something that I think the township really needs to, to, to contemplate more uh, because you're only basically harming the residents in place there and any new residents going in. I mean, with the development that might pass for uh, the Bawa property, even though it's up, you know, for, up for vote still, I mean, there's 24 homes going in there that might, their wells are affected because they, they just might not be able to sustain longevity. So I think the township really needs to think about the comp plan that was just passed because the whole purpose of it is to plan for the township. And I don't see how you can just cut off half, you know, part of the township saying, we just don't want to go that way because we want to try to control the, zone, uh, the zoning to, to control development. Obviously, East Valfield has not done a good job at all of controlling development. There's development all over the place, even now, possibility going down to Nicola Road. Um, so it, it just, I see it as a, as, a, as a bad thing right now to not be working on that. I mean, it, you know, you're seeing the Act 537 data come in that there's issues. And, and I'm not sure how you go about that, like to, you don't have your comp plan at any time. I know we had uh, we had someone, an outside consultant, prepare it. So I think step one is to probably have that review.
reviewed and have someone give you the what, what's the official explanation as to why we, you know why the cutoff was uh, public water along along the road why the public water service area wouldn't be extended further south. So my suggestion would be is as we complete the 537 and given the data that's in place, I was I know most of you weren't on the board at that time, but I was. A, you know, I was not in favor of doing the comp plan first before the I-537 because of, of issues like this, because it's hard to plan a master plan for the township when you don't have the master data before the township. So maybe as we complete the I-537, we realize where the issues are with people that are, are, are hurting for water, um, that we can go back into this area. There's a lot of residents in the township um, that, you know, that do have well issues, and some where they're having water delivered once a week. I mean, that's their life. They're having a, a water truck come in, deliver water for a while. And, you know, this, these are, uh, this is what the township board's here for, or, or township government, is to at least provide public services to people, you know, that need them. And we're, we're seeing that all over the place. Um, and even with the problems that we're seeing with nitrates levels with, with the public water we have here, I mean, you're, you're harming, you know, your own residents in a, in a way by, you know, Blocking any which way to provide, better, you know, some more other kinds of water to them, you know, for services. So, and, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact wording, but I mean, did the comprehensive plan strictly forbid that from going? Because my understanding is more of, you know, a guideline that you don't necessarily have to follow to the T. I mean, or was it more of a recommendation that the water don't go, doesn't go south? Or, Road. I don't remember the exact. Well, here's the problem. Um, I mean, with the comp plan, it's always to be like the, the, the guideline. Even though it's been breached in the past, with, you know, there's properties where they were deemed ag with the, the previous comp plan, and going back almost 10, 12 years, there's still boards are passing through developments, even though that comp plan stated that. The idea of spending $60,000 or, or more on a comp plan is that it is kind of the template that you follow. One of the things that we've heard with the Bawa property is council saying that water's not permitted in your comp plan. They're using our own comp plan saying, you know, you're the ones that passed a comp plan where, uh, you know, you're not offering public water and that's why there's wells going in uh, and that's causing conflict with residents as well, you know, saying, hey, now my wells affect that I've lived here 30 years and, you know, there's no real plan here to, to put in a, a small development like this where it could technically, even the residents themselves, the new ones going into the development, have problems with wells and water wells. Uh, I mean, I have a well on my own property that's 800 feet down. I'm well aware of a lot of the information that they're talking about and the issues that you can have. I mean, a lot of residents here have wells. And uh, it's just, I, 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 that Strasburg line to even be mentioned is, uh, I, don't, I don't get it. I, mean, it's I think just, it, was, it was an easy boundary where you didn't cut anybody's property in there. <coughs> didn't show favoritism to any one landowner, but I've built enough developments to know that I'm all for public water and public sewer for every member of this township that lives here now, but once you cross that road, you cannot stop it in any court of law. I've been on the side where we won, where the quarter acre zoning is it. Andrew Denman made sure that years ago when he put his stamp on urban sprawl. We went from one acre lots to quarter acre, but you can only do the quarter when you get public water. I mean, you can't beat it in the court. Yeah, but a lot of this township is already developed. I mean, it's a lot too late. It just seems like the, the ninth, you know, the King's Ranch area has been the, the reason for that south of Stroudsburg because most, I mean, most properties, I mean, there is some, a couple farms out there, but I mean, most of the township either has residential homes on there already. And it, it doesn't help the issues at hand. I mean, just to say that we want to protect the township of, of a boogeyman that could possibly come in, when that boogeyman's already happened to this township. Well, I've, I've been the boogeyman, so I don't mind being called the boogeyman. But our school district's shot right now, and our school district gets no say whatsoever on any building that gets done. We can put up a change of water and sewer in, we can put 4,000 houses just from my house to Pumbo on that side. And the school district has nothing to say. So the, the only resource the school has to save them is us by... Keeping it. King Ranch would never get developed. I mean, that would be out of your my lifetime, I'm sure, forever, even if we put one in the sewer. Right, but the issues at hand that we have, I mean, the, the effect on the school district, we already have most of the types of zoning that we that are required. The only thing that we're really lacking on is an industrial commercial. 
that's the, the area that anyone can really come into the township and Pierce saying, where is your industrial con, uh, commercial district other than three stores and a, a technically a veterinarian? I mean, so there's really not that there. I mean, as far as everything else, we have townhouses, we have a mobile park, we have condominiums, we have all that. So, I mean, the township could hold its stance for a while. I mean, the threat that, you know, just because we're offering residents here now, public water, and the fact that you think that you're going to control that going in 30 years, 40 years now is really a farce because as a, you know, as a resident coming from New Jersey, I've watched it build up like crazy. You're watching it go on down here in, in uh, West Bradford. It's coming your way in the years to come, not anytime soon, but I mean, the township needs to plan for the residents at hand. There's a lot of people with bad water, um, water issues, and there's also residents now that we're not technically blocking anyway. We're putting in... You know, we have a development before us of 24 homes going in that now residents all around are, are concerned with. I just, you know, you already have this effect on the school district already. South of Stroudsburg is only, a, you know, isn't the gist of the township that's already been developed. So, I mean, it's just, it's public services that people are asking for or, you know, quality of order. Well, are, they, are they willing to pay for it? Yeah. Well, that's the I thing. I mean, if you ask everybody out there if they want to flip... A six million dollar wood project, a sewer project, and we get thrown out the door in a heartbeat. Well, it's not. It's not necessarily. The only way you can pay for it, the infrastructure is you got to have somebody come in there and put it, put up the houses. What it is is that you have to, you know, the township has in place at the moment a policy is if the public water passes by, by your home, that you are forced to tie in. You know, that's one of the policies. That's one of the policies that are in place. But what I've talked to Dave Porter about at meetings that's working on no relations you know, with the Act 537 is whether or not the township can make agreements by surveying certain areas or certain communities of the township. You can hit several roads and inquire on them with, with a uh, survey, how many residents are really interested in public water in this area, and if it meets a certain percentile, that's when you would bring it in. If residents in that area said no, at least the township can move away from a policy of, of mandatory where you can give a certain sector of the township saying, hey, there's issues here, a lot of uh, septics are, are redlined here. You're having serious nitrite problems here. Do you realize, you know, the, the issues at hand and how many people, you know, acting as a, uh, as a uh, technically as a democracy, ask that sector how many people are interested, have a meeting here. You know, I was aware of Mr. Monahan at one time used to bring certain sectors of the township and they were having stormwater issues in here and he would bring them in here to talk about that. And that's something the township could do as well. It doesn't have to be... Even though our ordinance says it, it doesn't have to be set up that way as long as you work it out right with PA America. That's the real thing. I mean, if PA America gets enough where they feel like it's, it's worth their while, then you might not have to have a mandatory tie-in thing. But, you, you know, you already have most of this already throughout the township. We're, we're talking about a, a sector of the township that's being restricted. Well, it sounds a little bad bringing that up when you have a, a vote coming up on a new, on a new development that would... <laughs> Totally benefit from public. <coughs> it would, but as there's cars to you go past every house on the north side of Strasburg from Mount Carmel to where the Christmas tree farm was has been well. Right. Has no work. But it's an it's a non issue because they're not gonna fight, you know, the the, 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 the you know, I can't speak for their council, but they're not gonna fight the township saying, you know what, oh, listen, no, we're almost fight. through with this thing. Be like you you throw them the barn. Right, I'm sure. Hey, nobody would want sewer on that side of the road better than me. And then, if you go back to what I said, you wait for the five, Act 537 data to come in so we can see exactly where all the issues are of, of wells that are, are, are in serious crisis. And, you know, we can we can go from there off of data to try to, to work on this. But I'm talking about just in the master plan offering. I'm not saying force tie-in. I mean, in my area, we already have this. I'm not south of Strasbourg, but there's no threat of tying in up there. I mean, there's no water lines going down there. But to not plan for it is the thing. You have a master plan that is is taking out folks uh, uh, that are in this township from the plan. I mean, of uh, uh, just benefiting some way with some hope for future of, of having that. And south of Strasbourg has been talked about so much. You know, when I, I had meetings, I sat out here as a resident, um, and it's always been like, why? Why is this? The, the draw the line in the sand of, of doing this, and it's been the fear of development, but it's not like it was long ago. Will it be like that again? Sure. Everything goes through <coughs> cycles. 50 years from now, you know, you could technically have, as everyone flees Delaware County and 
New Jersey and other places to come from more land up this way. You can technically have it, but it's beyond our time, I think. Yeah. But it's just seeing if the port's interested in getting the data for that by three time, coming back to the company and possibly I'm certainly willing to look at the, the, the data. I mean, I'm, you know, we've been waiting on that Act 537 for a while now, and certainly seeing what it tells us, and then you know, weighing out our options at that point. I have no problem with that. You know, that's part of our job up here is to do stuff like that. So, you know, I, you know depending on what the Act 537, which is hopefully this year, maybe gets done. Yeah, we I think that'll give us a much better idea, and at that point, we can bring it back up and see. What our options are, you know, cost behind those options, the, main, the, the force tie in, like you said, if you're going to go that route, that's obviously a concern of people. Because while there's, you know, you could have 52% that want it in an area and 48% that don't, and they don't want to be forced to tie in, I mean, that's pretty darn close to 50 50, you know. It is. It depends, I mean, on how, it depends on how it comes down, but, you know, I think we need, as you said, the additional data before we can say for sure one go one way or another. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot to getting to the point of forced tie-in. I mean, I live by a development two doors down where they have public water and public sewage. I'm right there, and that water's not going down my road anytime soon. I mean, developments have been planned to go right across the street. So for me to tie in, I really would have to, to, to pay for something like that. And that's the same thing for most residents. It doesn't easily go past your home. But to not start planning for that or just to cut a sector off with no hope other than, and you know, you, obviously folks can dig a new well with the cost of a new well, and um, <coughs> especially uh, if they uh, are unlucky and don't strike the first time, every time they dig for one, you have to pay for that. But there's areas that, were, that are suffering from bad septics that are affecting other people's quality of water. And that's where the real issue comes in, because it's the quality of life that the township is supposed to be here to, to be looking at and, and, and obviously planning for, and to have a a master plan with data coming in from the Act 537, not to labor the conversation, but we're seeing numbers come in of issues in the area that's going to need to be planned for to have to have you know some type of sewage going in there. You're going to need public water to be able to to even push the sewage or you know and things like that. I mean, otherwise you're draining wells down just to handle sewage. So you know, I think need, yeah, I certainly like I said, I have no issue readdressing it, looking at it at least what our options are once the 537 is done. So to that point. Sure. All right. Uh, question. I'm <clears throat> just glancing over comprehensive plan. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see anything on the comprehensive plan that, that even showing future, you know, future developments on on the south side. No, there's there's no. No, there, there, there no. are no. Uh, there that, could be in some areas yeah, uh, depending on. That, that's correct. correct. So, if to plan for it, you, you have to have some type of road map as to where, uh, you know, where something might go. And to just say carte blanche, uh, well, because I, I do know one thing from experience, when you plan for, for, for public order, the plan means when the pipe comes, you have to connect. Uh, that, I, I don't want to be I just happen to be on the south side, and I'm just saying I don't really want to be on public board. I do agree, however, that you you have to plan, but we're showing a comprehensive plan that that doesn't even indicate any areas set aside for future development, and you know that 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 butts up against this uh, this agricultural preservation. Right, and that's why we're talking about the Act 537, which is the data of actual homes that are existing now with issues with no solution. Because it's the septics that are causing the most grief because of the nitrates affecting the water quality because it's all leaching into the ground going down. So that's the problem that we're having is that, um, you, know, we, the, you know, there's been planning commission members that focus on, you know, the issue of nitrates and the issues that we have. And you have to start thinking about that because as septics go bad and no longer function, it's an issue for the county. They're watching. They're redlining areas. And eventually they'll push harder on the township to plan for it at some point. You know, as far as the forced tie-in, I don't necessarily want to be forced tied in myself. I, again, I have a septic. I also have 
a well. But the, the fact of area, but I'm not in a troubled area. I can't imagine living in a troubled area that we're seeing come in on the Act 537 south of Strasburg and there's no plan. Or technically, if there was to be issues with the Bawa property, if it should um, come to be, I mean, there's residents in there right now. Like, what am I going to do? You know, my well pumps out two, two gallons <coughs> per minute. I mean, I'm in trouble when this thing is to affect my water. So, I mean, to not at least to sector off a section of township, Wilson, it's like the rest of the township is not sectored off. I'm not sectored off. The line goes in front of my home. I have to tie in. But how can you, how can you just choose one section of the township and say, well, it doesn't happen there? And it comes down to the thought of there's just going to be overdevelopment in that area. You know, the plan by previous boards was to stick the development up on the upper east side and the upper west side. It's closer to the highways. And that's where the development would be. Well, I'm not a I'm not a fan of, of that type of development myself, but there's I don't think you have any serious threat of that type of development going in. And the township is able to fight back because we have most of, of types of developments to have. What do we fear? I mean, possibly like a supermarket or something of that nature saying you don't have commercial, you don't have industrial, you know, and that's the real threat. But the township has every type of development or a type of zoning to really fight back that we're not, uh, it's not that we're not in compliance with, with uh, county or regional thoughts. But it, it is a real thought on the local level, you know, to draw that line in the sand and, and now to see data come in from, with the Act 537, that there's issues, Township has to, has to some way address that. And again, it doesn't mean a pipeline's going in, it's just at least the board has done something to offer hope. You know, that's, that's all, you know, as far as, taken it to the, the nth level of skyscrapers and all that. I mean, it's just, I mean. Yeah, I don't think you'll see skyscrapers, but yeah. when it, a normal 100 acre development costs you 700,000 in engineering now, to put it just, that's just in engineering fees. You don't even bother looking to give him the first 100 grand if there's a comprehensive plan that says the water stays on that side. Most, there's no sense of it. I mean, yeah. like I said, I'd be one to be, I'd be on the sewer. If we the have. sewer in right now, I'd be thrilled to death. But that, if you want to put public water and public sewer to every resident in the township, and that's all the father went, hey, I'd be your guy. That's not what but this is about. But it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and, it's not, and that's not what's being discussed. <laughs> right. And if you look on the Upper East Side, we have developments in place that were scheduled for 80 homes, 82 homes, and they have seven. So someone's going to develop in that area first. If you see that area even spawn something... Yeah, because right, right now, the, the, the bigger acre, the, the half acre and one acre lots aren't gone anywhere. Nobody's building. You can't. And you that's have a development. Uh, the only thing that's pushing are up to one-third acres and or apartments and townhouses. It's the only place you can make any money. So that's the threat then. I mean, it really goes back to right. that you could have that kind of development, which takes <clears> away from offering re, uh, some kind of plan for current residents. The thought that something's coming... Even though we look up on the Upper East Side and there's four or five, I mean, there's four farms that nothing's going on. Even developers have come in, left. It's not that time of, of uh, economy where, where we're having that kind of overdevelopment. But to, to just cut off an area, not give any plan, um, and just say just because we're fearful that it'll go down there. Uh, it, no one was fearful on the Upper Side, you know, so, it, 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 and of course we did see something happen there, but that's an unusual kind of cycle of development. Not that you won't have that. 50 years, 25 years, you can have it, but you'll have money. You get toll brothers in here anyway, they'll hit hard against a municipality like this and break them every which way if they thought they could make money. So it's just it's just taking in data, again, I'm, it's not me pushing everyone to tie in. That's not the conversation. It's looking at data coming in from that 537. We're looking at nitrate problems with people's water. People are having water delivered because they don't have enough water from their wells. The well costs are extreme. And just come up with some kind of plan to, to offer residents or here other than, you know, uh, no review. So that's all. It's just see what the, see what Act 37 says. If it's enough, maybe go back in and address the comp plan to address South of Strasburg. That's all. I, I would, I still would like to see what the rationale was because, uh, you know, money was spent, big money was spent for the comprehensive plan. Here it is. So what was the rationale to put that line in? Wilson, on page, on map number six, on that comp plan, and on page 24, 
This is water and sewer addressed. You said page 24? <coughs> page 24 for <coughs> text. And then the map, number 6, is two pages behind that. And that shows failed sites and septic issues. <clears throat> Our pages are running 1-9, one 1-24. Dash dash 2-24. This is just a discussion. I'm not. I'm not making a motion for anything. It's just a discussion off of what we just saw come in with the reporter. Mm -hmm. What we've seen um, with some, uh, you know, information coming in from the planning commission. You know, data that's within the complaint. It's just. That's all. It's just a simple discussion. Uh, I, I think we need more information from the Prop 37 before we. Right. You know, absolutely before we do anything. Well, okay. it, it it does say here that. Uh, you know, limit public sewer service only to the area north of Strasburg Road and the South Brandywine Middle School. Public sewer service areas may need revision in the future. Uh, and that's what Ed's talking about, if deemed necessary to protect public health and safety. Uh, public water, the township should request test results of the public water utilities regarding their test of public water, which I'm assuming has not happened. Uh, quality for publication on the township website and newsletter. Also, public water service areas may need revision in the future if deemed necessary to protect public health and safety. Uh, I mean, that sounds like it's kind of built in already that we can adjust it as needed. Yeah. Right. And that's the discussion of just talking about it. That's all. I was just trying to get it out there. Um, yeah. So thanks, Pat. Moving yeah. on to part C. It's on um, continued discussion of getting Mortonville Road open where it's uh, been closed for quite a while. There's someone yeah. here from the traffic study. As I said, we did get some yeah. information. Um, is effectively how we are, are looking at that and planning for it. Um, 
Corresponding to that, we looked at two alternatives. We looked at um, if you were to, to make this, this taper via, with guide rail or with uh, alternatively with single face barrier, what's commonly known as a jersey barrier. And then um, we, we prepared two cost estimates, which um, I've given both of those to you. Um, in, in short, the, uh, the guide rail estimate was about half of the jersey barrier estimate. And, and I will say that these, this, these.